Good morning. This is Pastor Donnell coming to you from the chapel at Antioch here in Antioch, Tennessee. Pastor Mike Delaney, I want to say to you and your wife, Tiffany, good morning. I'm so glad to be a part of what it is you're doing here. I'm thankful to God that you took the boldness to hear from him and move forward with this ministry. Last week, we talked about the fear of the Lord and how it is important that you fear God, you revere him. Please understand, God never put man in the earth to be a survivor. You were never intended to live in survivor mode. God put man in the earth to have dominion. But first, the Bible plainly says, he who comes to God must first believe that he is God. That we establish. You must have the fear of the Lord. But next, that verse continues, it says, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you're going to receive the reward of your reverence, you must hear from God. How can he call you? How can he lead you if you don't know his voice? Today, I want to establish some things in your heart so that you can establish some things in the next generation. They are looking for voices to lead. They are looking for leadership and the church has to do a better job at helping them to understand you can hear from your father. You can hear from your creator. You can hear from the God of the universe. Now, I want to use Paul here. I want to use Paul because Paul is handing down understanding to Timothy, his son in the gospel. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. Timothy is receiving this letter from Paul and here is what Paul has to say. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Paul simply says, Timothy, without the written scripture, you don't have a clue on how to hear from God. Paul is simply saying that all scripture is of God and the scripture leads us, the scripture guides us, the scripture teaches us. If you want to hear from God, the primary way to hear from God, teach this, is the Bible. We need the word of God because it is God's inspired word to flawed men. There is no doubt about it that the men who recorded the scriptures had flaws. That's the beauty of who God is because he is full of mercy. And the Bible says that his mercy endures throughout all generations. Don't let anyone convince you that the Bible is not God's word because man wrote it. That's that's so far from the truth. It speaks to his love. It speaks to his grace. It speaks to his mercy that he trusted man enough to write down what he's saying. The Bible is the primary way that we all hear from God. David in Psalms 119 asked the question, how can a young man cleanse his way? And the answer was in the question by taking heed to the word of God. We have to convince a generation that they can be cleansed of their way, that they can be set free from their sin, set free from the things that are hindering their lives, that they can be set free from poverty, they can be set free from addiction, they can be set free from lust, they can be set free from criticism, they can be set free from low self-esteem and depression by the word of God. If we're going to get this thing back on track, we have to speak life, but we have to speak the word of life. It comes from the scripture. So the primary way we hear from God, let's establish that, is the Bible. Not the Quran, the Bible. Not the art of war, the Bible. Not the power of seduction, the Bible. Not the 45 laws or the 48 laws or the 50 of laws of power, the Bible. We must get back to researching God's word. Why? Because God's word is a living word. It is alive today as much as it was the day they began to pen it. Second way man hears God, God speaks to man. There's no doubt about it today. Let's go to the scriptures. I want to show you this. John 16, 7 through 15. This is Jesus speaking. Listen, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged I have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come God doesn't necessarily speak to all men audibly but all of us 
have access to the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the promise of Jesus Christ, the third of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit comes that he may lead us and guide us in the path of truth, not for his own namesake. The Holy Spirit living in you, speaking and guiding you is God himself working in you. The Bible says, how much more will the Father give unto those who ask of him of his spirit? He will not abrade it or he will not withhold his spirit from you. If you don't know if you have the Holy Spirit, ask God to give to you the Holy Spirit. He will not hold back. Why? Because you're diligently seeking him. The Holy Spirit becomes your reward. The fact that you have him living on the inside becomes the becomes the catalyst to your relationship with the Father. The fact that you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside becomes your catalyst to your relationship with the Father. The Bible says, for when they shall bring you before magistrates, when they shall bring you before dignitaries, take no thought of what you shall say. For in that very hour, the Holy Spirit will give you what to say. We are led by God by way of his Holy Spirit. So yes, we have the Holy Spirit. And he lines up with the written word of God. The third way we hear from God is rather simple. People. But you got to have some trust. Let's start with Ephesians chapter 6. We'll start at verse 1 and we'll continue to verse 3. Ephesians 6, 1 says this. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long on the earth. Now, our parents are the first line of authority that most of us have. Unless you were adopted, it was your foster parent, your grandparents, so forth and so on. Typically, as a child, it's your parent that passes on to you the authority and the understanding of what it means to obey. When your parents give you instruction as a child, you don't have a relationship with God that you understand or comprehend. And there are some uh, children who may understand but for the most part they understand through their parents this is why God says this is the first commandment with promise if you learn to obey your parents you have learned to obey God when you that are godly parents instruct your children they are hearing the voice of God the role of mother the role of father is vitally important to this generation because there are lack of true godly parents. If you have the privilege of fostering or mentoring or passing on God to the next generation, they will hear God through you. And then we'll go on from there because they have to be, uh, they have to be taught in the word of God. Maybe you feel limited as a parent. Maybe you don't feel as though you can pass on the full necessity. Well, this is why we have the church. In that same letter in Ephesians 4, Verse 11 through 15, he says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Why? Till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him all things which is the head, even Christ. He gave us the fivefold ministry gift to perfect the saints. You have to go to church. You have to be in the company of the teaching of the word of God. Let's be honest. You go to your job. You go to work. You don't have the time to put in the depth of study that it takes to get, gain a greater understanding of who the Father is. Yes, you have your Bible. Yes, you are led by God's Spirit. There is no doubt about it. You need to be taught what it is God is desiring when you read His Word. What is it He's expecting of you? The fivefold ministry gift has the responsibility of raising you up to the point of Christ's return. You cannot do away with the church. You cannot just say you don't need the fellowship. The Bible says forsake not the fellowship of the brethren. You will be increased. Iron sharpens iron. I heard these things in church. I didn't hear those things in the world. And when I was going through, I thank God for pastors, teachers, prophets, evangelists. My parents who said trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. We need people to hear from God. The fourth way we hear from God 
will probably stir a lot of questions, even cause some controversy. Dreams and visions, prophecy, angelic visitation, all are still available to you today. Let's go to Daniel chapter 9 verse 20. Daniel says, while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in a vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me, see there, the angel is speaking. He says, he informed me and he talked with me. And he said, O oh, Daniel, am I now come forth to give you skill and understanding? I've been taught that the angels, by the word of God, are ministering spirits sent forth to help us. They are present at all times. God uses angelic beings as a means to minister to his people secretly. Remember, he says, be, beware of how you entertain a stranger for you may be entertaining an angel unaware. Daniel said something about an angel that's pivotal. He says, from the time you begin to pray, I heard your prayers and now am I sent here to give you skill and understanding. If we're going to reach the next generation, God is going to have to send some help from the heavenly realm. They need to be able to understand that. You need to be able to understand that. God still speaks using angelic beings. I pray that this has encouraged you. So let's go through it. The number one primary way we hear from God, the Bible. Number two, God will speak by his spirit. He speaks for himself. Three people, your parents, your leaders, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher those gifts. And then last but not least, through visions and dreams, angelic visitation, prophecy, God still speaks to you. If you've been suffering and felt as though you haven't heard from God, don't be apprehensive anymore. Turn to his word. Seek his face. Ask him to give you of his spirit. Go to church this week. Don't just go to Sunday service. Get to a Bible study so you can get a deeper revelation of what you've read. And don't overlook those dreams next time. And I'll echo the scriptures. Be careful how you entertain a stranger, for you may be entertaining an angel unaware. Pastor Mike Delaney, I pass it back over to you, my brother. God bless you. Thank you for this wonderful work that you're doing.